When you make a new SwiftUI project, you'll get a bunch of files plus 20 or so lines of code. In Xcode, on the left here is a project navigator where you can see those files that have been made for us. Here is we split app.swift. Uh, this contains the main code to launch your app and show your initial user interface. Uh, if you want to make some data when the app starts and keep it alive the entire time while the app runs, you put that here in this main app struct here. Uh, Content.swift contains the initial user interface for your app. And it's where we're doing all our coding for this project. Over here is assets. This is our asset catalog where you can add pictures you want to use in the app. Also add colors here with app icons, things like iMessage stickers and so much more. Then there's a preview content group with its own asset catalog inside. There's another one, this time just for handling previewing of data so you can see how things look while Xcode's running. Now, depending on whether you have Xcode configured like me or something else perhaps here, you might not see file extensions here on the left. This is a Swift file, you can't tell that, um, but it is. If you want to change that, you can do under Xcode's options here under settings. Uh, choose this general tab here and a whole bunch of things, options here. And you're looking for file extensions. And the defaults hide all, you might want to show all. Um, it's, it's down to you. Anyway, in this project, all our code will take place inside this contentview.swift file here. Um, this is open by default by Xcode when you make the project. So you should see it already, already open your screen. Um, it has some comments at the top here. Uh, the name of the file, the name of the project, who made it and date and so forth. Um, these are started slash slash. They're kind of grayed out by default. They're ignored by Swift. So you can use these comments to add explanations to your code if you want to about how your code works. Below that is 15 or so lines of code, this big chunk here. Before we start writing our own code, it's really worth going through what all this does. There's a couple of things we need to you. First, this import Swift UI line. Uh, this tells Swift we want to import all the functionality given to us by the Swift UI framework. And Apple provides flame frameworks for a whole bunch of things like machine learning or audio playback or image processing and, and, and so much more. It's really powerful. So rather than just assume our program wants to use everything ever, we've got to tell it, oh, this is the part, Swift UI, that's what we want to use in our project here. Second, this content view struct uh, can go on view part here. This makes a new struct called content view. Say it conforms to this view protocol and that view protocol comes from Swift UI. And it's the basic protocol that every kind of piece of data that wants to draw to the screen somehow needs to adopt. So all text, all buttons, all images, sliders, and so much more, they're all views behind the scenes. And when you have your own layouts that combine other views, they're also views, they just get bigger and bigger. Inside there is this line here of our body sum view, which makes a new computed property called body. And it returns sum view. And what that means is it's going to return some kind of data that conforms to the view protocol, which is our layout, the things you are showing on the screen somehow. And behind the scenes, this will actually result in a very complicated type being returned. Oh, it's a tab bar, then a text thing, then it's the right of that image, and to write that slider, da, da, da. big, long, exact type of our data. But we don't want to say that. We don't really care. We're just saying, trust me, it'll be some kind of view that goes back. Now, this view protocol has only one requirement, which you have this computed body property here, return some view. Uh, you can and will add more properties and methods to your view structs, but body is the only thing that's actually required. Inside the body is this big chunk of code here, uh, a VStack. And it's going to show this globe image with hello world. That's the image here and the text here. Uh, this globe image comes from Apple's SF symbols icon collection, where there are literally thousands of icons available to us in various weights and more. And uh, they're free to use in all your apps, which is really, really nice. They work on all Apple's platforms as well. Then as text view here is just simple text being drawn on the screen. Hello world. It's not editable but it will wrap across multiple lines as needed. It's just static text on the screen. We also have a few interesting things here. These methods being run on image here, image scale, foreground style, and padding. Um, this is what SwiftUI calls a view modifier. They are regular methods, padding, foreground style, and so forth, 
but they have one small difference, which is they always return a new view that contains both your original data, your image or whatever, but whatever extra modification you asked for. Oh, it's now an image with a large image scale. Oh, it's now an image with a tinted foreground style or whatever. Below this content view struct here is this hash preview line here with content view inside. There's actually a special piece of code that won't actually form part of your final app that goes to the app store, but instead is just to Xcode. So we can use that to say, let's draw a preview of your code over here. Let's render a live version of your project over here. And these previews form a really important Xcode feature called the canvas, which is usually visible right in your Xcode window. Um, you can customize preview if you want to. You can add more code into here to make it more unique into how much you want to. Um, but it'll only affect the way your canvas is shown at design time. When you ship to the app store, uh, you know, push to your real phone, for example, you're testing these out, it won't change the actual app being run. It's just for previewing purposes only. Now, the canvas will automatically preview using one specific Apple device. I have the iPhone 15 Pro Max right now. To change this, you want to see the list of devices up here, a little arrow appears. Click on that and choose something else. You might say, I want an iPad mini or iPhone 15 or an iPhone SE or something else here. And when you do that, it'll actually change the preview. So it'll say, okay, I'll now load the iPhone 15 Pro, for example, rather than Pro Max. But it'll also change when the code runs. So when you press uh, Command R in the virtual iOS simulator later on, you'll get a different simulator. Now, if you do not see this canvas, um, you'll have a hard time. It's a really helpful thing to have here. You want to go to the editor menu up here. There's a whole bunch of options. What we care about though is Canvas right here that enables or disables Xcode's previewing Canvas. It's a good idea to have that available um, because you can run code and see it straight away in there. And it's actually interactive too. You'll see later on you can type directly into the Canvas rather than running it in the simulator. You can run it right in there too if you want to. Very often I should say, sometimes you'll have an error in your code or something and you'll fix it and it'll, it'll pause this previewing area, which is frustrating. You'll see a little refresh button when it says preview paused. What you want to do is um, either click the button to review the, re renew the preview or important keyboard shortcut, option command P on your keyboard. That will do the same thing as clicking the refresh button. 